Hey everyone, it's Mithril and welcome back to my journey of learning to draw. As I mentioned in my last video, I started taking foundation sketching with Sori Kim at Brainstorm. So I thought I'd provide some updates on what we're doing in class and how the homeworks have been going. I really wasn't sure what to expect coming into this class. It just seemed like the most basic class that Brainstorm offered, the most beginner thing that was a prerequisite for the other classes. I was afraid to jump into something that was too advanced for my level. After all, they're pretty expensive. The courses take 10 weeks. I was only gonna take one. So I wanted it to be something that I could really absorb and improve off of. Later on, I was talking with Uncomfortable who created Draw a Box, and he suggested that I take a dynamic sketching course, like the one that was offered at CGMA. But by that time, I had already registered for this course, so I thought, maybe it's close enough? <laughs> And I couldn't really tell based on the description of the course on the website, but after going through the course for a couple weeks now, and now looking back at the CGMA gallery and syllabus, it looks very similar to the stuff that we're doing. Speaking of syllabus, here is the syllabus for the class that I'm taking. So Sori said that it's structured in a way that we start with plants and organic forms and stuff that is more forgiving to proportions and perspective, and we start to introduce it and get stronger in it so that by the time we reach week seven, doing hard surface stuff, we will be able to handle that and use our new perspective knowledge well. And week nine is usually supposed to be like field trips as a group back when the classes were done in person. And instead of that, she was going to be subbing that in with some figure demonstrations, which sounds awesome. Love figure. Something else that I thought was really cool was during like this very initial first class, she talked about the mindset of learning and design and drawing. And she said that most students don't have trouble with necessarily understanding the theory, but more of feeling like a bad artist or feeling bad because they can't make good drawings or manage their time well. She said that the point was not to make good artwork and that we need to move away from the concept that we are what we make. And also that being able to draw makes you a good artist, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah, she said that being a good draftsman, it doesn't make you a good artist, good designer, storyteller or have good ideas and to make sure that we split off our homework and our skill building from what we do for fun. Some stuff can exist in the middle doing both, but we need to think of our homework as working out and any bad drawings as pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, which is good. And she also clarified what the class is for and what we should be focusing on. I feel like this is one of the biggest problems I have when trying to self-study is just, I have no idea where I should be focusing my brain power, like what's important. She said in this class that we need to look at something, break it down and try to understand the forms. And that the objective of the class is to help us understand space and put things into space. And being able to do this will allow us to draw whatever we want in the future. And on top of that, we're trying to get familiar with how we learn new things and how we learn best. Thinking about stuff like, what's easy for me? What processes and exercises do I like? Where do I hit a wall? What makes me bored? And now that I'm looking back at my notes about this, I'm like, hmm, I haven't really been thinking about this. So I feel like making these videos just by themselves has really helped me in my learning process because sometimes things just go in one ear and out the other. Of course, I wrote it down. I took meticulous notes, but that doesn't mean I'm going to read it again. This forces me to read it again. Thanks, YouTube. We also got a supply list. Yay. And I actually had most of the required supplies already because from doing draw a box, I had so many fine liners and I was playing around with toned sketchbooks, but I thought it would be a great opportunity to explore some new supplies and restock on the ones I already had, so I did a little bit of a supply haul. It's actually been really fun playing around with my new supplies, seeing how they work, especially since now I feel like I'm actually trying to achieve something with them, if you know what I mean. Like, I see what Sori does in class and I know what I'm supposed to replicate. So under those conditions, it's a lot easier to say, okay, so I wanna recreate that with this particular pen. How do I do that? As opposed to like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do with this pen. Like what kind of marks is it even supposed to make? What is my artwork supposed to look like? And just being lost in a vacuum and then people will just tell you to like play around with it and figure it out. And I have no idea what that means. Now it all kind of makes sense a little bit. Also, her preferred white gel pen is the Uniball Signo and I got it and I can confirm it works really well. So if you're looking for a white gel pen, that's your answer. She also talks about the method and process that we'll be learning and 
thinking about as we do the drawings in the class. And I thought it was really interesting because she compares and contrasts it with other methods. Like she talks about how when you sketch with a pencil, you make a lot of sketches and you try to find the right line within all those other lines. Whereas we're trying to become more intentional than that. And we're also trying to find the structure and carve out the shapes as opposed to like, I don't really know how to describe it because I don't understand it that well. <laughs> Now that I think about it, I thought it was really interesting. Like we're trying to think about drawing through the form and what the actual shapes look like rather than just, I don't know, the 2D shape. And she also establishes some rules like no erasers, no rulers, no tracing, no ellipse tools, and no ballpoint pen. And I don't know, I guess it's important to establish that none of these are rules for art, they're just rules for this class because they help to promote the things that we're trying to learn within this specific class. Something else I thought would be fun to share are her elements of drawing that she goes through. One, line confidence. Being able to know that you can put a line down that goes where you want it to go. Avoiding jittery or uncertain lines, landing the quality of line that you want. Perspective. In this class, we'll learn to freehand perspective, going for an understanding rather than perfection. If you need extreme accuracy, use a 3D model. Form and volume. When we have different shapes, it's being able to visualize what you're drawing as a three-dimensional object rather than just the outline of it. This all goes back to an understanding of space and objects in relation to each other. We're going to be doing a lot of deconstructing what we see, generating shapes without a reference, modifying by carving into and manipulating shapes. Rendering. Placing values. Where? Why? Design. Filtering which information you want to include. Form sensitivity. She didn't really go into detail here and I wouldn't have understood it anyway. Now a couple weeks later, I get it, but I'll be covering this later on. Proportion. Things like animals and people, vehicles, etc. have fixed proportions. This is being able to look at something and recreate it. And something I thought was really interesting that she said is that a lot of people start here when they learn to draw, but this is way down on the priority list compared to the rest of the stuff that came before. I thought that was quite fascinating. And the syllabus definitely reflects this idea. Like I've completed four weeks of class so far and we have not cared about proportion and recreating exactly what the reference is yet. And last of all, knowledge, visual library, slowly gathering more and more knowledge about different subject matter. Then let's get into the actual lecture part of the class. So we started off with lines and connecting two dots with horizontal lines. And she talked about ghosting over the lines in order to get them a bit more accurate. Then putting circles inside the lines and making those circles good and moving from the wrist to the elbow to the shoulder. She talked about ellipses and curves and various types of line exercises to build up confidence and accuracy. So while we were doing this, I thought it was so funny because I'm just like, damn, I just got away from Drawbox. I was suffering. I got away. And now we're doing the same exact exercises. I guess that's a testament to how basic and important they are. But I just thought it was so funny. And everyone in the chat was like, oh my God, Drawbox is here to haunt me. <laughs> And I was like, yes, we will never escape. But on the other hand, there were definitely major differences between what we were learning in Drawbox versus what we're going through in this class. Like I only made it through lesson one of Drawbox plus a little bit of lesson two years ago. So I really don't know what the upper levels of Drawbox are at all. So I can only speak to like lesson one really. But in Drawbox, he talks about turning the page as much as we need to basically draw the same line over and over, right? Like if you want a line that goes up and down, left or right, bottom corner to top corner, you just turn the page so it turns it into the one line that we're practicing. In this class, she said she wanted us to keep the page still and learn to draw lines in different directions. Like this one exercise where you sort of draw a dot in the middle and you draw a bunch of lines that just intersect that one dot as closely as possible. And in Drawbox, when we're doing these ellipse exercises, he tells us to draw through them a couple times and really get the, I don't know, like the movement down. Here, she said she wants us to do one ellipse, one circle, no drawing through. You start and then you end at the starting point. And that was really hard. I kept on thinking, oh my God, like these are turning out so bad. I'm surprised that I'm still so jittery and I can't do it. And it's just, 
not good. I feel like when I did Drawbox, I was so much better and that I've regressed in skill. But I definitely did, you know, keep trying my best, doing the homeworks and, you know, putting my best effort forth. Then later on, I looked up the homework that I actually did in Drawbox. And I'm just like, damn, I guess I really did improve. Like in my mind, I tried so hard and it looked really good. But looking back, I can see the places where I messed up. I can see the improvement I've made. And I think <laughs> this is an example of why it's so important to keep that old work, to be able to reference it later on, because you forget so quickly how bad you are when you start. And I'm really proud of how much progress I've been able to make. Then we talked about volumes using these blobby shapes. I remember there was also this sort of blobby sausage shape exercise in Drawbox. We talked a little bit about two-point perspective, but this part of the lecture was really short. Then we talked about texture, copying it from the photo, and also using the elements of the texture from the photo and making up your own textures. And by this time, I'm just like, oh my god, there is so much happening. Because I remember when I was doing Drawbox, it took me like months to get to the point where I was doing texture. I, I think this was like in lesson two or something. And I'm just like, whoa, we are going through so much <laughs> in just the first three hour class. And keep in mind that like the first hour was all just introduction. So this is just like bam, 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 so much information all at once. Then at the end of class, she gave us our homework, which is two pages of lines and then drawing ellipses on top of them, two pages of curves and diagonal lines, and then two pages of basic forms like like boxes and cylinders, rotating them around, looking at them from different angles, but just freehanding them. Like not using the horizon line and the two vanishing points or anything like that, but being able to make it look right without using that. Then we had two pages of organic forms with dissections, which I feel like she didn't really explain what that meant. She just drew an example where she sort of like cut one of the forms and there was stuff inside of it. I remember this was also a draw box exercise but I remember having a lot of trouble with it. So I just, I tried my best, I don't know. And one page of textures and gradients, eight to 10 of them. So I'm kind of curious what skill level this class is aimed at, because theoretically it's for beginners, there's no prerequisites to this, and there's nothing more beginner to take at Brainstorm. But on the other hand, she went through this all so quickly. And because of the introductions, I knew that most of the students have been drawing for a year or more, including me. I've done this for like three or four years now, including lesson one and half of lesson two of Drawbox, which is why I felt like I could even sort of keep up with what was going on. And I was hanging out with some of the students that were more advanced and they were like, yeah, I'm kind of not going to put as much attention into the lines and the ellipses because I've already practiced those so much. And I'm going to put my time into the organic forms and the textures and gradients because I know those are going to take longer. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Then I talked to another artist who is pretty much completely new to art and they said that they were pretty confused as we were going through the lecture because everything was happening so fast. And every time Sori stopped and asked like, do we have any questions? Do we need any clarification? They just didn't know what to ask because like the question would just be, I confused and I don't really understand what's happening. And so I'm just like, man, it's really hard being a beginner artist if this is like the most basic stuff there is out there, you know? And I guess everyone just goes through the struggle of not knowing what to do or where to start and having to jump into something that they don't really feel ready for, which, you know, is probably good. Pushing your comfort zone and all that. I just... I just wish it were easier. <laughs> and there's something, I don't know, there's like a disconnect in my brain, which I really sympathize with people who like ask Kim Jong-Yi what pen he uses or people who constantly like ask artists like, hey, what brush are you using in Photoshop or whatever? Because sometimes it just feels like the tool is the thing that's standing between you and the other person and the art that they're creating, right? So I was kind of thinking about this while I was doing the homework. I'm like, man, you know, Sori was using Photoshop. Maybe it would be easier if I were using digital and I didn't have to use these stupid fine liners on stupid paper. <laughs> but then she posted some of these um, like example demonstrations that she had recorded and put on YouTube. And in those she was using just 
a normal fine liner and for some reason it actually made me feel better it kind of calmed me down i'm like no 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 now that i have clear evidence clearly it's just me i need to keep practicing it has nothing to do with the medium this is the medium that i'm supposed to be using and learning on she used this to get better and I can too. And it actually helped. It actually helped. I know it sounds kind of ridiculous, but seeing her do it using the same supplies that I had really made me feel better. And I think that's part of why I really enjoyed Evolve so much because in those videos, in that course, everybody is using the exact same materials. Like all the students are using the same materials. The teachers are using the same materials as you. They understand what it's like to work with those brushes and that paint and this canvas and everything. And it just takes away one thing from my mind to worry about, you know? There's enough stuff to be self-conscious about and stress out about when learning art. Like having the right supplies and wondering if they're making making a difference in how well you're doing is not something you want to worry about. I was really scared of getting to the textures and I feel like I might have left it for a little too long. She did talk about how time management would be a big thing that we needed to work on as we went through the class because if you're not careful, you can spend so long on one part of the homework and not get all the practice by doing like all the different exercises and stuff. And I also thought it was really interesting she wanted half of them to be from direct observation and the other half could be from photo reference. This is something that she emphasized a lot during the class is to look at real objects and draw from them and like what we were doing trees and plants and she said go out and try to do as many of them from direct observation as possible. I didn't end up doing any because it's really cold and I did not feel like standing outside for 30 minutes drawing a tree. But that's neither here nor there. So when I started on these textures, I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> like this is the exercise that scared me off from draw a box because I was just so terrified of doing it and I never gave myself the chance to actually learn it because I felt like I didn't understand it enough. I looked at it and I was like, I'm not gonna be able to do that. And then I didn't, which was probably a mistake, but this time, you know, it's my homework, so I had to do it. And so I got started on it. And at first, it did not feel good. I felt like it was so messy. I was placing the shadows in all the wrong places. Nothing looked right. But then it kind of started to make sense. I started to see how whenever I put lines down, I felt like I was sculpting. I was pushing things back in space and I was pulling things forward in space just based on where I was putting my pen down. And I thought, wow, this feels powerful and I can't yet do it with precision, but I can kind of feel a bit of what's going on. Like I still can't really understand how a particular shadow is going to create a particular feeling and shape, but now I understand that it will. And I can tell that my experience bar is filling up and that as I keep doing this, I'll be able to understand it more and more and gain more skill and flexibility in where I put my pen down. And I feel like something has you know, just changed inside of me. I realized that doing these textures, like there's a reason why we have homework. There's a reason why we have exercises. There's just some things you can't learn by reading about it. You learn it by kind of like meditating on it. And these specific homework exercises are the exact meditations that will tickle your brain pathways in the specific ways that'll help you to understand these concepts. I feel like I've definitely gotten trapped into that mindset where I need to understand things. Like I don't want to start doing it until I know what I'm doing. But now I realize I will never understand it if the only thing I'm doing is reading about it and watching videos and listening to people talk and seeing them do it, that I have to put myself into this state where my brain is forced to understand what's going on. And I have to keep showing it these things and demonstrating these things and using my muscles in a way that reinforces it all. So of course I waited until the day of class to finish my homework. Like class is at four and I literally turned it in at like 
3.30 or something because time management is freaking hard. But then during class, Sori went through every single homework submission and gave us some really useful critique on it. Like, the particular thing that helped me the most was I was really confused about hatching and shading, and I couldn't figure out why whenever she scribbled on these messy looking hatch lines that it looked beautiful, but when I did it, nothing really made sense. And she was able to give me some really useful tips on that. Like, if I want to explain the form of something using hatch lines, I can either follow the contour and not have to pay attention to the shape of the shadow so much, or I can follow the shape of the shadow and make the actual hatching lines messier. But you can't have both of them be messy. Like you can't have a messy shadow shape and messy hatching shapes, which is what I was trying to do because I didn't understand the concept of this. And just instantly that snapped into place. But if I hadn't attempted it, if I hadn't made these bad drawings and been confused and not understood what was going on, I never could could have asked this question in the first place. I never could have had a place for this answer to slot into and improve my skills. So yeah, that was week one. We went through like all of DrawVox lesson one and then half of lesson two in one week. And I've been having a lot of fun in this class so far. My classmates are really cool. Sori is really cool. And the critiques have really been helpful. If there's anything specifically about the classes that you'd like to know, definitely ask me and I'll be happy to clarify. I'm looking forward to sharing more about my experiences and my improvements through the class. Stay safe and healthy out there, and remember that talent is a myth. Now, get back to work.